What is going on with the Kawhi Leonard injury controversy? Can the Raptors get to the NBA Finals? Will Mark Cuban survive this sexual harassment scandal surrounding the Mavs? The only question left is, say it with me, you win. Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to the B-Ball Breakdown Podcast. As always, I am joined by Dave Dufour, and I might sound a little bit bad because I was out last night and I'm now sick a little bit, and bam, damn, is it annoying, but you know what? We got basketball tonight, and that's a really good thing. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm, I'm missing basketball. I am. I definitely missed it, even though the All-Star game was in L.A. I still felt like I wanted the real basketball. Uh, parenthetically, I am dropping a video on the Globetrotters uh, that I spent some time with on Sunday. They actually had me on the court with them, and they went over their famous weave. So I was like a kid in the candy store, Dave. You wouldn't believe it. I was a huge fan. Uh, Sweet Lou Dunbar is the coach who was a player when I was, uh, you know, growing up watching him. And uh, I, I also think that you can run this. If you're a coach out there at whatever level, you should run their weave. It's, uh, it's actually more choreographed and more fundamental than you might think. Yeah, the half-court weave, I mean, the Golden State Warriors use it often. Um, I've used it quite a bit uh, on teams I've coached. Um, it's good for just getting guys going, you know, getting going in a, into a – just moving in the half court. I like to go the uh, the weave into a pin down, and oh, then yeah. you get you almost get a side weave. Um, it's actually it works pretty well. Um, or into a pin down, and then maybe uh, into a little like uh, off the pin down, you can get a little bit of a high post split. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it also, right, you can get the, the high post feed out of that is what makes it really exciting. And they'll roll it and they'll do all funny stuff. But either way, uh, that's when you can get some really exciting stuff. And if you get good at it, you can do that against a regular defense who's trying to stop you. Absolutely. Uh, because they get used to, they think they get used to it and all of a sudden, bam, you cut back door. Right. And, uh, it's all read and react, by the way. It really is. It's, you have to have rules that they have, and you know, I'll show you yeah. those. And then uh, and read and react. It, to, it, was, I was, it was amazing. So um, Yeah, it's a, it's a nice, it's like a, it's a nice little like, change up. And then you can take it into a fastball. You know, you can yeah. you can lull the defense a little bit. The real question is, did they try to trade you to the Washington Generals? <laughs> no, they did not. They were, <laughs> thank God. I, although I, I was trying to get a, a seat on the bench, you know, as an assistant coach, but they don't need any of like that. So maybe one day, <laughs> if I get popular enough, I'm somehow going to make it where I get to be a coach. But I'm not sure. I guess you're right. I, I have to be a coach of the Generals. I cannot be a coach of the, of the Globetrotters, unfortunately. Right. But um, nonetheless, uh, well, let's let's talk a little bit about what's going on in the NBA because we had some. Uh, I guess it's today was a pretty big bombshell, wouldn't you say? Um, wait, wait, which one? What am I missing? The Kawhi. Today? Oh, that was so. That was yesterday. It was yesterday. All right, I yeah. lost track of what day we're at. Yeah. So uh, Woj sends out the tweet. Uh, well, I guess it started in the morning. My uh, Mike Wright uh, posted that Pop said that he didn't expect Kawhi to make it back until basically next season. And then we saw the video, and the video, you know, he kind of expands on that a little bit. And, uh, you know, he talks about, you know, there's only like 25 games left, and, you know, the Spurs are notorious for liking to ease guys in, and he just didn't feel like it was enough time. And then Woj drops a Woj bomb and says that Kawhi's been in New York dealing, you know, looking for a second opinion on his on his quad, the tendinopathy that he's got going on there, and that Essentially, he's been cleared by the Spurs doctors to to return, uh, but has been advised not to by the second opinion. The the bigger thing I I think that has people have lost sight of this is that when Woj sent this out, he actually he he mentioned that it's it's been about Kawhi managing his discomfort, which to me means he's still in pain, which means he shouldn't play. You know, I know we ask a lot of these guys, but we shouldn't ask anyone to play in pain and and. Quad tendinopathy is is quite painful, uh, apparently, from the limited research I've done on this. And um, if it's still an issue, it could lead to bigger problems down the line. And you know, he's got his whole career ahead of him. And I'm not saying that that's why he's not coming back. I don't I don't know if this is a you know a long term thought or thinking about his max contract, which he's going to get no matter what. Um, I would say that if he's in any sort of pain, he deserves to not play if he if he's not comfortable. I, I just don't think that you know we should all freak out about this. I'm much more concerned about the earlier report from last month where we heard that he wasn't happy uh, with how his injury was being managed there. But, I, you know, it's the Spurs. I, I think that we can, we can trust them to kind of work this situation out. I don't know. 
you know, that's what's the, the interesting about this is it is the Spurs. You never, ever, as an NBA team, want to have that kind of medical information coming out. You know, the idea that he's been cleared and he, it's simply he won't play, that's a really bad position to put a player in. That should never have come out. I don't know how that did. But, like, the idea that, yeah, the, the Spurs doctors say, yeah, you should be able to play Kawhi, and why aren't you playing or something? And they might not even be saying that, but that's what it ends up sounding like. So that's what's shocking is that a, 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 a program like the Spurs would never normally have that come out. So I, I would imagine that whatever we've been hearing, I know Jalen Rose is talking about it too, is, you know, there might be some really a big rift coming out of uh, between Kawhi and the Spurs. Now, remind me. Is he? What's his free agent status uh, going into the summer? He can opt out in the summer of 2019, which effectively makes uh, next year the last year of his contract. Um, and he is eligible for the for the supermax, so it'd be like a five year, 219 million dollar contract. So there's quite a, quite a bit of uh, incentive for him to work it out with the Spurs, and obviously for the Spurs to work it out with him because he's a great player, but. If if the Spurs feel like this is a situation that isn't going to work itself out, you know, from a personality, you know, standpoint, we could see him moved this summer. And I don't want to be the type of person that jumps straight to the Spurs trading Kawhi Leonard because we just don't know enough about the situation. And the, we all knew that Lamarcus Aldridge wanted to trade from the Spurs, and they worked that out. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, I guess it's it's a possibility. It's on the table. It. I mean, I guess it has to be on the table, which makes this summer even more interesting. It does. It does. Now, uh, I mean, just based on what they've done with him and the development of him, and I, would they ever seriously consider trading him? It sounds hard to believe we'd ever get this point, but the bottom line is they can't compete against the top teams without him. Uh, no matter what their record is now, they're just not a team at that level. Uh, Legendary NBA does ask us, hey, coach, can we say that Kawhi is injury prone? Uh, this is interesting, right? He's had some hand issues, which are usually freak kind of accents, and now he's got yeah. this. What what when is that threshold? I don't know. I mean, it doesn't. These are like you said; they're kind of more freak things. Like you know, he had the eye injury where he got poked in the eye. He had the elbow injury, and like I think that's just normal, you know, things that people pick up. But the Spurs are super cautious, so he may miss more games with some of this stuff than than the average guy because. You know they're they're thinking long term. Um, you know the ankle injury in the playoffs last year, uh, he, it, it happened. You know guys sprain ankles. That doesn't mean you're injury prone. Um, so no, I'm, I'm not going to say he's injury prone. I just think he's you know had a couple of injuries, which is the ankle injury last year, and then that seems to have possibly contributed to the quad issue. So no, I, I'm not going to call him injury prone. I, I don't know. I don't like like that term as it is because it's injuries are are often you know, triggered by an event, not just a guy just gets hurt. Right. And I have to imagine that, you know, his diet, he probably takes care of himself and eats really well, which is also a big part of, you know, staying out of the injury prone, right? That's right. So, and you know what makes it kind of hungry even talking about it, which I I think I'm gonna have to go for an RX bar, Dave. Yeah. You know, my, my wife turned me onto these. She's a big fan. She loves the chocolate and sea salt flavor. Um, Two of her favorite things, you know, together. That's Absolutely. sweet. You know, and we savory. should get our wives together because she, my wife also loves the same same flavors. And it's interesting because their core ingredients do all the talking. It's simply like eating two egg whites, two dates, and six almonds with no BS. In fact, no B, uh, we call BS is a, you know, a really good phrase we've been hearing on the, on, on the news uh, the last couple of days. And so uh, this is another one of those things echoing that point. Uh, and it's it really real food ingredients that actually taste really good. So these RX bars are something that you should definitely try. Uh, and they come in 11 delicious flavor varieties, gluten-free, soy-free, and dairy-free. And again, I can't stress how important it is to eat healthy and eat clean you know, if you want to be a good athlete. Yeah, and and no added sugar is important to me. I mean, you know, I, I try to keep all my sugar intake to uh, fruits, and, yeah. uh, and they use uh, fig or dates um, for their for their sweetness here in this, and it's they're delicious. Yeah, and it's also, great to have. I throw it in my bag when I'm when I'm flying anywhere. For sure, and egg white the egg white, egg white protein is also huge. And I stopped eating sugar or, or, or uh, processed sugar. And I wanted to say this, I had a, a lot of sugar on Sunday night, and I literally felt like I got hit by a car on Monday morning, having not eaten it for like three months. So th- this is a really great way to, to replace all that stuff. So if you guys want to also get some RX bars, you should really try and do that. And you can also get 25% off your first order 
when you visit rxbar.com slash Coach Nick. Uh, that is Coach Nick is the promo code, or you go rxbar.com slash Coach Nick and get yourself uh, a, a whole lot of different flavors of really good, healthy eating. All right. That's good stuff. It is. So, Dave, we have uh, – do you have any good questions right now in the uh... – um, You know what? We got a good question. Um, someone asked uh, – it Dirk Diggler, too <laughs> – Nice. Uh, ask, uh, what is the biggest philosophical disagreement the two of us have when it comes to coaching? And I don't think we've run into a big one. Um, you know, what about the diving on the loose ball for loose balls? Well, I'm against it. Okay. Yeah. I thought, damn, I thought we were going to have something. All right. What no, about, um, I'm not into. 